good morning everyone welcome to our session today we are going to talk about our journey into the developer experience my name is ravi uh, i currently work at us bank i lead api engineering team and developer experience team and i am here with poonam my colleague poonam poonam uh, welcome to our session, as Ravi said, and thank you, for Ravi, passing me along. So my name is Poonam Kirk, and I'm currently a Vice President Engineering Leader within US Bank. And I carry a 15 years of experience, and I lead a DevOps team within US Bank. I'm a speaker at multiple conferences, which includes Open Source North and Grace Harbor. In, in addition to that, I'm a uh, here, I'm a community leader of the WIT network, which is founded by the Microsoft, and I'm a huge technical advocate for open source technologies and tools and clouds, DevOps practices. In addition to that, I hold a technical membership for IEEE senior member plus BCS fellow. Okay. A little bit about us, uh, US Bank, we are the fifth largest bank. We operate globally. We have offices in uh, US, uh, Canada, and Europe. We are heavily regulated industry. You all know that finance industry is one of the heavily regulated industry. And at US Bank, we are all about uh, empowering people and to reach their potential. And this is the journey how we are trying to empower our developer internally to reach their potential. This is all about the developer experience, how we empower our internal developers to reach the potential. Thank you, Ravi. So before I, we jump into this, uh, Happy Diwali to those who celebrated the, today. And happy uh, Halloween in advance. And let us know in our Q&A, is it a trick or a treat for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> so, so here is the thing is like we started this journey as a, I think like three or four years back where the mission is like make it easier to create and manage best of class software products. And and how we started, like we were a technical he uh, head of the leader and we questioned ourselves, like whom should we take care of first? And the one thing which stood out immediately is our engineers that we care most. Now question is why? Because in the past three years or four years, I, miss, I say that, we have seen that like we have huge talented engineers and developers. They comes with all skills. But when, it come, but when they are building a solutions for us, they come across so many challenges uh, that we will see into the next slide, what are those? And so that's where they struggles with it. And in addition to that, we all witnessed COVID-19 was there. So it adds more complexity to it. And I believe most of you felt the same like what we felt. So here are, uh, as we stated in a previous slide, like we put our people first, that's where our mission started. And now questions are, what are common engineering challenges? And as we all know, there are thousands of different technologies, systems, and applications are available for business. And integrating the third party systems or custom applications such as your ERP or through using APIs adds substantial complexity to your project. And which even, and the bigger challenge for these integrating third parties are, they are not even, they never, they are hidden during the start of your software development process. They always be visible when it is their end. And that leads to what? Extra cost, compromised quality, plus, um, sometimes even entire failure of the project. And the question is how? So these are the various forms that you have been witnessed in your space that comes in terms of process as an onboarding these tools, plus adding certain rules and regulations which ties back to your as compliance and which term as a frictions to our engineer. And our engineers cannot focus to a single task and module, and they eventually become overwhelmed, and that's where it is, they, their experience is unhappy. Now, within our space, we kind of sit back and try to, uh, we try to list out all those common engineering challenges and divided these challenges into a two bucket overall. One is technology bucket, another one is the culture bucket. So you might see these two goals by parallel together. They are interweaving. So 
uh, so for example, say for lack of centralized technology and services and in, uh, registry, which slows down our onboarding process, and sometimes it compromises our quality. And at the same time, if you see that limited feature in approved enterprise tools hinders development, it again ties back to our culture that calls it technology silos, and which immediately bubbles up at as a duplicate effort across in our suburbs. So, okay, Poonam, you might say that, like, okay, you guys have these challenges, frictions, et cetera, et cetera, we just know it. So what did you do? So as an engineering leader, we tried first, okay, let's build out a custom, custom developed solution. So we build really a custom based solution. It uses an ad, it uses the template based approach and it supports multiple languages. And it does have fully integrated DevOps pipeline. And that, and it really helps our engineers in terms of building a innovation. So they, they can focus on to building a solution for our problem rather than going with those onboarding processes. And other thing is the the other thing is like it is provides a uniform adoptions of languages and tools that we are using in our bank. But it comes with some opportunities. Like when we build this application, we just care about CLI personas. So we care about okay, you know, let's build this tool, let's figure it about like com, uh, command line user interface. So it just it just currently supports CLI and rest of the personas are still work in progress. It lacks little bit application inside. We have it, but it is not fully integrated. We try to add compliance and security. Uh, still, it's a work in progress. And one thing that I would like to call it out here, it is a complex solution. Because when we build this application, we build this application onto our, one of the commonly used language, oops, language that you might all use, Java. and <laughs> Plus, additionally, we use that uh, plug Eclipse.vertex plugin, which is uh, which supports to only, I believe, like Ruby, Kotlin, and other languages, not entire language tool that we were looking for. So that's where we say like it's a very complex solution. It's hard to maintain and scale. So what is the outcome? Then we build this with this. Uh, as we see as a uh, as an entire organization, like what we achieved with this building this tool. So there are certain wins. One first win is like we try to empower our engineers with the mindset of like okay having innovation. Secondly, we have this automation piece that's awesome. We try we give a leverage to our um, engineers to adoption of new technologies. Plus, we try to bring all of those integrated third party components into a central place. So that's one of the way like we have adopted new technology. We adopt centralized piece and we bring the uniformity within our bank. But there are certain opportunities. So opportunities are we have still some places for other, par other third party components like manual process. Then we, as I call it out, the user experience is just only for CLI, not other personas. Uh, still there is an improvement over centralized technology and removing the technology silos and insight and compliance were there, but it's not fully developed. And we need to bring the standardization overall uh, to entire organization in terms of using tools. So this is the uh, engineering development. No, so this is how our journey is. And no matter how big or small, and solving a software development challenges never comes easy. From challenges in requirements to integrating the new tools and technology, from ensuring end-to-end -end securities in challenge and uh, two challenges of duplicating efforts. Software product development requires you to be clear and stay focused what you have set out to solve in order to achieve what you have set out for your mission. That's what it is. And now I'm going to pass to Ravi. Thank you, Poonam. With what we learned from the, our internal experience, we looked at it. What is the real problem we have? We want to provide a well tooling for the developer. We want to solve the developer experience at the end to end. So we, in the beginning of the year, we looked around what is the thing that is missing from the, our internal experience. So that's where we come up with, we want to provide a single pane glass experience to reduce the cognitive load and make it easy. The goal is make it easy for the developer as 
backstage say, says, happy developer, happy outcomes. So we kind of looked into uh, our problem area into three different buckets. One is, how do we help developers to create and manage solutions? How do we, they make the solutions faster, creates faster? And the other bucket is kind of discovering. We have a kind of little bit challenge. We have multiple different uh, cataloging tools. We want to bring all of them together to make it easy to discover and to encourage the reuse across the teams. And the last one, but very important, uh, we are a very highly regulated industry. We want to provide a tool that will provide a lot of insights about the application. It may be for the developer, it may be for the manager, it, and it is for the auditors and compliance teams because that's the biggest factor in our industry. And when we took this holistic approach, we, we haven't stopped at the developer persona. We looked at the full spectrum of things that we have to do. So we looked at the developer persona, we looked at the managers, they have to manage the team effectively. We looked at the compliance and risk factor, which is very huge. And audits are very huge. We, because we are globally, we are audited by many, many different government entities. So audit is a big thing. We want to solve that also because at the end of the day, developers' journey won't stop at coding. It goes beyond. So that's where we, we want to build a holistic approach. So now we are at the crossroads, uh, what we do. We learn something with our new tool, internal tool. We like what we saw, but we still discovered few factors there. So then we kind of uh, looking at what we need to do, either we want to extend one of our internal tool or whether we want to create new from the scratch and whether we need to buy something out commercially available, that's where we kind of saw backstage. Backstage, and this is where I will show how we are using backstage. We started our journey with the backstage. We saw there is a natural match with what we are looking for and what is backstage was offering to us. So, but we are still skeptical. So that's where I want to give a big shout out to Francisco and Carl here from the American Airlines. We had a great conversation with him and we saw what they did with the backstage. And also we had a conversation with a couple of Spotify team members from the backstage. That's where we thought, okay, this is the right approach that we can use the backstage where it has a mix of things, like where you can implement your own stuff, extend with the plugins and adopt quickly. So from here I will show how we are going, we are using the backstage in our journey. As I said, this is a journey. We are still into the journey. We are in the very early stage, but we are accelerating very fast. So the main bucket uh, that we want to solve was create and manage. Uh, we want to make it easy. So with the new technologies coming day in and day out, it's always challenging. And we want to, and being a regulated industry, we want to have the application create and follow certain standards so that we will meet, meet our regulatory standards. That's where we want to use that uh, create and manage uh, feature we want to provide. And we kind of solve this using the two um, features of the backstage. One is the templating feature, software template, that's where we created some of the templates. And this is a space where uh, when we presented that internally to our organization, there was a lot of excitement uh, in the house. And a lot of teams, they came forward and they want to create more and more plugins. So this one actually accelerated our inner sourcing model also. Uh, I have here my colleague, uh, Martil, their, their, their team is also adopting this uh, to build more templates. And the other one is, um, uh, it's common, quite common that day-to-day uh, -day you need to navigate through multiple systems. A developer or a manager, you need to look at your like tickets in the service now. You may need to look at your issues in the Jira. You may need to look at, so we want to bring everything. So if, uh, if I go back, our goal was to make it easy and provide a single pane gas experience. So we are creating a dashboard where the developers or managers or any persona, based on the persona, you, we will render the information, where they can easily look at the system and the status, uh, that could be their outstanding trainings or any security kind of thing. 
So this is a great place where they can land here and they can navigate from here if they have to take any actions into it. The next one is um, discovery is very important. Like you need to know what you have in your organization. And having a multiple cataloging systems. We have catalog for applications, we have catalog for APIs, we have another catalog for the libraries. So we want to bring all of all these things into a single place where you have a centralized view of what you have in the organization so that you can extend the reusability across the team and the sharing the information. And this is our catalog information. We, right now, what we are doing is we are first bringing all the three different catalog system into a single uh, source kind of thing where you can discover more information. And the uh, last one, I said, it's, it's not la last in the priority, but it is very important, like insights. As I said, having a catalog, cataloging your item is okay, but you need to know the real fact about your application. That's about the insights. So we want to make it easy to get the application insights, and uh, uh, catalog is the best place. We saw, like, we want to extend uh, providing CI, CID, status, we want to provide the application vulnerabilities bringing from various systems. We have a lot of code scans happen, static, dynamic, and all those things. So we want to bring everything uh, so that they can uh, drill down into each application, how the application health is going on. And that is very helpful for many, many reasons, like we all know that. And another factor is, uh, the big thing about is uh, technical documentation. Um, it's common in any organization, probably you name it, you have multiple uh, ways you can document your uh, application. Like you have a code in your repository and your documentation may be in the SharePoint, maybe in Wiki or somewhere else. And what happens and what we saw is, um, e even though the developers maintain properly, there is always a gap between what your code is doing and what your documentation is. So we want to bring uh, uh, the culture of document as a code, and that's where we are using the uh, TechDoc plugin uh, to bring technical documentation into a central place. And to put it all together, this is our view of uh, that we are doing. We, we are right now tackling the main pillars uh, like uh, technical documentation, we are software templates, cataloging, and we are still working on our insights part of it. If you look at this, this architecture, at the center we have the backstage, and it is connecting to the various other systems. And also, you can see, we have another, uh, we are building a centralized uh, asset systems and risk and vulnerability database and the insights database. We are bringing all of them into the backstage to show as a single point, uh, single pin glass experience. And so with that, what we are getting out of it? Fewer individual systems. Day to day, you can probably rely on backstage or our solution, developer experience solution, so that you can manage your day to day work with fewer systems and consistent user experience. Uh, whether it is a developer experience or the management or the auditor, they all go to the same place. They all look at the same information. It's provide the reliability of the information. And automation and standardization. That's where the tech doc, sorry, templates will help us to automate our application creation with a standard way of doing so that we can trust that the applications that are built is following the standards and the secure methods. And all in all also, onboarding. It is easy to onboard. So it solves our challenge of onboarding an application from weeks to probably in a couple of hours. You will have uh, with the template, we want to enable the developers to have a starter application to deploy within no time. And all in all, easier access of information, and the other thing is self-service. So we still evolving in the self-service area where you can probably trigger your uh, CACD pipeline or you want to create your cloud resources, those kind of things. We are still evolving that space, but our goal is to provide the self-service. So 
this is how backstays uh, helped us uh, to take our goal and mission or dream whatever you say uh, to help us with a uh, cataloging features and template and tech docs and the other like lot of uh, open source uh, tool tooling available or plugins they are helping us to make our reality uh, our goal as a reality with that i will pass it on to puno okay so as you all know we are still in this journey we are still improvising our tool so we are hiring and please join us in this journey that's what i'm going to welcome you all <laughs> We love it. We love it to be here. So, okay, so my question and answer is, is it a trick or treat for you guys? <laughs> yeah? Who was asking? You're making me run today. <laughs> Hello, this is Rodrigo. Uh, thank you very much for presenting. My question is for this implementation, like how big is your team and the skills required to manage, deploy the system? That's a good question. Um, how big is the team? So when we started, we started with one person and now we are roughly around seven to eight. It depends on how you count it, including the product manager. I'm the technical manager for that and we are still expanding. So my team is a core team that is, uh, will take care of the platform, the internal developer platform. And the way we are looking at it is we are uh, going in the inner sourcing model so that any other team can contribute to that. So uh, that's how we are so evolving. Hope it answers your question. Just a follow-up, what experience is needed to, like, how much knowledge do you need on backstage? Uh, so backstage, how much knowledge? So the, we, <laughs> that's, a, that's a tricky question. So we started looking at the backstage last year. Actually, we, we kind of, we have one cataloging system that we catalog for APIs. My team manages that. We want to kind of looking at alternatives. That's where we started looking at the backstage. Uh, you need to understand the backstage philosophy because the core skills, I think Node.js, uh, React, and uh, TypeScript is the core skills, but you need to understand the ecosystem and how to use your backstage. Backstage is a tool. Like You need to understand deep if you are going into full-blown. And there is, will be a small learning curve. I won't say small. There will be a good learning curve to understand what fits best to your organization, right? Someone can start with a, a simple one tech doc to uh, give a, a quick, thing, quick thing. And if you are going into a deep uh, cataloging, maybe that's a bigger area. I, I would say that requires more attention. Uh, and uh, scaffolding, I think uh, it's a relatively easy to adopt. So if anyone trying to start small, maybe I will say start with uh, scaffolding. That we, actually, that will provide a lot of value. Uh, and Next one is tech doc. Then you can venture into the catalogs. Thank you. And she's uh, my colleague who is uh, contributing in the I'm, uh, My team is the first user of um, a backstage in US Bank. And uh, just to put in context, right? Um, so I have uh, seven engineers, and um, it took us. I, we thought that discovery-wise on uh, on how to look, how, you know what backstage is because um, at first I I didn't trust Ravi on what he was saying, <laughs> <laughs> but but we said that uh, we have to see it right. So we we went to the documents and everything and and I gave the team like one sprint. Our one sprint is one week, and. Um, it didn't take a while for them to really learn it because the following week, someone was pinging me saying, Merle, I, I, I've got to show you this. And well, can it not wait? And he said he was just so excited that he was able to create a UI in backstage. And that is really awesome for, for the engineers themselves. So I just want to share that. Yeah, exactly. I echo what Myrtle says, D don't trust Ravi. <laughs> 
So the re because my team also uses just a one person and he was just like, okay, Poonam, I want to explore backstage because we already have this in-house app. It matches what we are doing. So I was like, okay, go ahead. And within, I think like a couple of hours, he was like, you know what, Poonam, it's nothing. It's like you and I can go and just do it. And as you are asking for experience for the position that we are looking, if you are really curious to learn and new, uh, learning new technologies and tools, we are not looking for backstage experience. I <laughs> so that's what it <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna say that like if you are very curious to learn new tools and technology and contributing back to this big community of the backstage, I'm, we are ready to hire you. That's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> can I can I ask another question? Sure. So uh, talking with many uh, adopters or people interested in backstage. Uh, especially in highly regulated sectors like you represent, of course. Uh, and uh, there are, believe me, lots of banks, but also in the pharmaceutical insurance. Uh, one of the most recurrent questions is, uh, okay, how uh, we can deal with highly regulated sector and all the constraints that we have in terms of security, processes, uh, and... Uh, I mean, this kind of tool that, for example, as part of Spotify, we use in a very open manner because we don't have any constraint. Everyone can do almost everything. But it's a completely different philosophy. So it would be very, very interesting for me to hear what's your experience being a great example of a high regulator sector. How did you manage the challenge? How do you manage to make it work in your environment? Because I'm pretty sure it will help a lot of people here in the room and not only in the room. Yeah, um, how we, um, so it's, initially it was a lot of, um, like we even don't know whether this is the right tool and whether when we pitch this idea to our management and uh, executives, we don't know whether this will fly in, but, the way we were uh, up, we approach this one is actually it complements what we are trying to do, or it will help in the regulatory industries. So that's where I was talking about uh, providing a standard way of building application. You are guaranteeing that right now. I was talking to one of other my colleague. He is saying that yeah, they they hired a lot of engineers uh, because of the new feature, and each one is building their microservice in a different way. And that's where it solves, all right? Uh, if you are talking about the regulations and all those kind of things, if you create your template in a standard way, and if you add all your bells and whistles, uh, that's where it helps in that regulatory environment. You are guaranteed, or rather you are making sure that the applications that are building is following the best standards. Of course, it will not come easy. Uh, some of the regulators, that's where we have, like we are, we have other ways we collect the evidence and we show the evidence of how this is all happening under the knee, in the backstage of it. Okay. More questions? Wow, this is Lots a huge of crowd. People. I didn't expect that <laughs> this will be this big crowd. <laughs> this is my first speaking engagement. Yeah, well, you can well, see that. Yeah. <laughs> And she is the reason she pushed me hard. <laughs> I care about community. That's why I said, like, just whatever you have done, it, just share with the community because that might come. Yeah. Because we come from regulated industry because okay. we care about people's health. And, <laughs> and we want to give it back. Like I said, uh, I really appreciate Carl here. He spent a lot of time with us uh, explaining their solution. And I will highly recommend you all to go to the YouTube and search for American Airlines backstage implementation. Uh, uh, that's must watch if you are getting into the backstage. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. I appreciate what you did. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Thank you so much for presenting. This is really helpful. And uh, I'm in a similar situation, I think, as you are in, an, in a regulated industry. Um, you mentioned in terms of adoption, you mentioned how you guys uh, have software templates that you're defining. In terms of the organization that you're in, how much traction have you got in defining enough, what you feel like is enough and 
how much more do you have? You mentioned inner sourcing. Mm -hmm. um, are you are you able to get teams to contribute to get engaged? That's yeah. Just uh, curious. So uh, from the couple of things I want to mention. So as Poonam initially mentioned, the in-house tool that's her team was initially managing that one. And actually, we are replacing <laughs> the inner sourcing, not inner sourcing, the uh, in-house built uh, uh, template tool. Of course, uh, that uh, the inner sourcing, it all depends on what is the mindset of the organization. So if you ask me, probably a couple of, couple of years back, we are not that open right now. We have a lot of excitement in the inner sourcing. We are promoting uh, our leadership and everyone. We encourage inner sourcing. And right now, the, my situation is right now, there are too many teams. They want to contribute to the, our solution, but we are not ready to help them out because we are also kind of establishing ourselves as I, I'm growing the team and I'm adding new team members to. So, so we are kind of taking a cautious approach. Right now, we are working two to three teams uh, uh, right now on the inner sourcing model because we want to create a model for others to come in. So I, we are only taking few teams right now in the inner sourcing model on the, my journey so that we establish fully the process for others to come. And we want to create the guides how to also so that if someone want to contribute to the new uh, template, uh, we want to so-called golden path, blueprints, whatever you call it. So we want to create a well-documented process, internal process, how they can uh, add to the solution. There was another question here, I think. Wow, too many questions. Yeah, um, considering the size of, the, of uh, US Bank, how, how it's a very large company, uh, I'm curious what the size of your catalog is. How, how many assets would you say, in general, you're ingesting? And do you expect it to keep going up? Yeah, we expect to keep going up, and because uh, we have thousands of applications, and if you open the hood underneath that, we have probably multiple thousands of services. And if you extend that back to like, uh, what is your approved? Uh, we all about. We need to look at what is your approved uh, open source library. So we want to catalog that also. So if you look at it. Multiple thousands. Uh, I don't have the correct uh, number here, but we feel that it's a large. And also, like we want to uh, catalog everything, anything possible, kind of thing. Uh, uh, for example, any cloud assets uh, like Cloud Firewall. It's kind of a deployable asset. We want to catalog who is the owner. So we we are still looking at it. So if you ask me, maybe after a year, probably it will be a huge number. <laughs> I will say. Hey, how's it going? Um, I was wondering, since you started using Backstage, have you guys tried using it for incident management metrics? So like as an engineer is troubleshooting an issue and he's completely lost, has no idea what's going on, um, it's hard to find information sometimes and I feel like Backstage would be perfect for that. And I uh, was wondering if you guys maybe tracked mean time to detect or fix metrics after implementing Backstage. So we had a lot of conversations about that, metrics. Uh, it boils down to not only that, what are, like, we want to capture other metrics, but we are still debating what is the right metrics, right? We are right now all about enabling the developer. That then we want to just um, track them then we will want to go into see what is the real data looks like. For example, incident, we have a, our incident management system that is, we have all the metrics there. So that's not a major problem for us, but we are looking at the overall, like there are so many developer efficiency metrics. We, right now, we have that as a probably target for later, but we want, we are looking at what we want to monitor and log so that we can measure properly. and. What makes most? We we are still evolving on, on that one. We don't want to make this tool to make developers pressured about their metrics. We are all about when we are talking about making developers happy. We don't want to put another metric showing that see your scorecard is like this. Your scorecard. It's not about that. So our goal is to make it easy, right? Efficient. That's where we think naturally the metrics will help them. Um, hi. 
Got a mic hey. over here. Um, so especially in a highly regulated industry and also with multiple catalogs that you're trying to put together and a lot of content in your catalog, how are you guys looking at the accuracy and are you guys using catalog info YAML for that? Are you doing certain things to help with the accuracy of the catalog or anything like that? Yes, uh, that's a good um, question. Um, I don't think we solved, I will explain this, I will take you back this. So if you see that uh, there is a central uh, asset system, cataloging, right? The way we are looking at is, uh, when we are creating the new uh, assets through back, uh, the developer experience portal backstage, you are creating a new asset. So the asset journey starts from the backstage, developer experience platform, and then we want to send it to a central repository also because we want to do some reporting and all those things. Likewise, we still know that there are other assets generate from some other catalog kind of thing. So we are using the entity provider to sync asynchronously. Like the, initially, we kind of did a hard wide into the other catalog system, but we ch uh, changed it to like a read and write asynchronous model. So first, we will write into our own backstage uh, catalog if it is generating from the cat uh, our developer portal. Then it will sync into the uh, through the custom entity processor to the other central asset. Likewise, we are trying to asynchronously read that one. That's working for us. We have time for maybe one very short question. I don't know how much question. time we have. Like we <laughs> <laughs> yes, one very short one. Um, what was the first version uh, or the first use cases that you enabled your developers, right, to, be, to become, to be agile with the project? Like what was the first things that you wanted to achieve? Okay, so the first version he started with using my app, so <laughs> in-house app. Don't want to that story. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, no, it's uh, yeah, so it's like our my project when uh, it's an in-house app, as I stated, and it just builds a scaffolding of your project, and so our engineers can focus on building the business logic. So he asked me, like, can I use your template because it matches with what Backstage is using as an approach. And that's where he used like Java, that's, that's where he used our template and tried to see that whether it works. And it, it sounds like it was done in a days, right? It was done in a days and which, and for building us for that template itself took almost like for us three or four, or maybe probably a month for that. So that's where we see like, you know, backstage is an opportunity to add uh, any, any developers means any developer which has like even I see like a fresh or graduate who is really to learn can easily create templates and start working on it. And uh, I think one of your question is whether we are agile. Yes, we are agile. We sometimes we went into the daily sprints to weekly sprints. Now we we are to because uh, the way it is is um, we are learning. We are trying to solve the solution. We are selling it out. We are coaching others, so many things are happening at the same time. So we are way agile, I would say. Okay, thank you so much. Big round of applause.